So today I am going to explain you how to do a respiratory system examination in a child. Okay. So for uh, you all know that respiratory system involves upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory. Right now for this purpose I, today I am going to explain you how to do the examination of the chest which is the part of a systemic examination. In the respiratory system as you are the it also involves nose, oral cavity, ears. That you should have examined by now in your head to toe examination. As I have already told you that we examine those parts in head to toe examination. Right now we will uh, discuss about the examination of the chest which is a part of the systemic examination. Now before we start the examination of the chest, you have to ensure that the child is in correct position. In an older child, you can uh, place the child according to your will. But if the child is very small, is an infant, then you will have to uh, examine in the supine position. The main thing that while uh, checking for his uh, position is that the neck should be center, in the center, the back should be straight. Sita karo bitter? Very good. Okay. Uh, if you are, if the child is in standing position, the arm should be straight lying uh, beside his uh, body. Okay. Straight. And you have to remove the clothes. This is the first thing. Now, as you know, uh, as part of any systemic examination, we have four headings inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Okay? So, in children, the pattern of uh, this inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation can vary according to the age of the child and according to the convenience of the child. Okay? Because in doing inspection, before doing auscultation, if you disturb the child so that it becomes irritable, then you won't be able to complete all your examination. So better to do those things which are uh, least uh, problematic for the child first so that he is comfortable and you can complete your examination. So the, so the sequence of the examination may not be exactly the same as we do in the adults. But for this child, since he is cooperative, so we can continue in the same sequence. Okay. So the se uh, first is inspection. So in inspection, what we don't have to touch the child. Okay. We will be inspecting the child from all the directions. We have to inspect from the front, from the sides, from the back. Okay. Now, uh, what do you see in inspection? We see the skin. What kind of? Uh, first of all, you will see the skin. If there is any. Uh, scar mark, any lesions, any kind of venous prominence, okay? Apart from that, you can also see the pulsation, the visible pulsation. Here, usually in a thin child, you can see the apex beat uh, visible, okay? Now you have to note everything, uh, all of those things in the inspection portion. And then next comes very important examination of respiration, which involves first of all respiratory rate. You will inspect for the respiratory rate which obviously you have already done in the vital ex system exa vital examination also but here you will have to note the respiratory rate and you always have to count for one minute in a child and why do we count for one minute that i will explain later okay so you will be noting the respiratory rate now next comes the re uh, respiratory rhythm what is the pattern rhythm of the breathing okay what happens in children uh, especially in infancy the uh, rhythm of the child varies. Okay? The, uh, sometimes the child would be respi uh, his breathing pattern would be faster, and after some time he might take a pause. Okay, so which which may be normal, which is called as periodic breathing. That's why it is important to count for full one minute in the children, because uh, if you count for thirty seconds, then that could give a wrong impression of the respiratory rate. Okay, so. After count, after looking for that uh, 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 the rhythm of the breathing, what will you do next time? Next, you will see what is if there is any signs of respiratory distress visible. So you will look for all the accessory muscles of respiration, how much uh, they are working. Okay, so so already by now already you must have observed that uh, nasal flaring is there or not, sternocleidomastoid is uh, prominent or uh, contracting excessively or not. Then intercostal muscle retraction or subcostal retraction is there or not. So this all you will observe in your inspection. Okay. From all the directions as I already told. Now the next thing that you are going to do is 
uh, in, uh, during inspection you are going to ch uh, check the shape of the chest and the movement now in the shape of the chest what do we see you have to be careful that you have to see from the front from the sides and from the back also okay then from the sides what you have to uh, you have to look for if there is uh, the chest is symmetrical or not and if there is uh, at any place extra excessive bulging is present or not okay now always remember you also have to look at the supraclavicular area also okay if there is any excessive bulging prominence or any uh, depression or not okay now after that uh, you have observed the for the uh, chest movement and its symmetry shape symmetry uh, you have to examine after that your inspection portion is done then we come to palpation okay so in palpation we confirm the findings of the inspection so whatever you have seen you will have to confirm it in your palpation so before as you touch the child obviously you will feel for his temperature which obviously by now you should have also checked in your vital examination then you will see if there is any excessive tenderness at any body part or not okay you will look for any tenderness in any part of the body after that what we uh, what you have to do you have to check for the trachea position of the trachea so the position of the trachea how do we do we have to put these fingers at the insertion of the sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid you, you will keep these two fingers at the sternal head and keeping the head in the center you will start tracing the trachea with your middle finger and you will look for if there is if there is any uh, deviation of trachea to either side a little deviation to the right side is normal okay so uh, after this you will have to see what is the movement of the chest wall that is uh, if the child chest is moving symmetrically or not so for that what we do we, uh, we hold the child like uh, it should be again at the uh, sitting and straight position then you will hold the chest like this see now beta see now ha ab lamba lamba saas lo you as you can see my thumbs are moving okay so they are moving equally in both the direction all right so this you will you have to see the movement of your thumbs so you are holding this at the level of the nipple okay i am holding the child's chest at the level of the nipple and then with a certain speed see that up speed see that up and and then with the uh, respiration automatically my fingers my thumb would move and i will observe how much is the movement and if it is symmetrical on both side or not okay so this is a uh, then there is also method that we do in the adults at the back we go and see for the uh, movement of the upper part of the chest okay now uh, comes the next point of the in palpation we have to check for vocal fremitus okay so here is also okay as per bolo ek do teen very good bolo very good bolo so we will check for uh, vocal fremitus that is uh, the uh, vibrations that you can feel while the child is speaking at all the as, as many intercostal spaces as possible okay and you will note if uh, it is equal on both the sides or if any side is decreased okay after that your part main parts of the palpation is also oh, done okay of course in palpation also you you must look for the apex beat okay you have to note it you will if you are writing the cardiovascular system then you will have to note it exactly where it is and uh, so the idea is that by the position of trachea and by the position of the apex beat we can identify the more the mediastinal position where it is has it shifted to either side or not so that's why it is important to note the position of apex beat also okay so in which we will confirm in the palpation now coming to the next uh, portion which is palpation so in palpation what we do uh, we will percuss each intercostal space the main thing is that you have to percuss both the sides first this side and then this side to compare it with the opposite side okay so how do we percuss see now beta you have to keep your uh, middle finger along the intercostal space okay and 
then with your other finger middle finger you will be can you hear it it's resonant so you basically you have to keep it like uh, your middle finger along the intercostal space it's better to keep the other fingers off because that will uh, decrease the voice okay the sound now and with the uh, middle finger you have to focus now the movement should be at the level of the wrist you must be knowing by this time you should not move like this okay so you, this just comes with the practice compare it with the opposite side okay so hand up अगर बड़ा बच्चा है दिल्ली विल कोऑपरेट एंड यू कैन आस्क हिम टू ठीक है सो यू हैव टू डू द परकशन इन ऑल द इंटरकोस्टल स्पेसेस अच्छा नाउ टेल मी हाउ डू वी नो व्हिच व्हिच नंबर ऑफ इंटरकोस्टल स्पेस इट इज डू यू नो सो There is a uh, way. Very good, very good. So the angle of U is. This is the angle of U is. Okay, where the malleable sternum joins the body of the sternum. See that little bit of pleats. See that right now. Okay. Now this, this at this level, the rib which joins is the second rib. Second rib. Second rib. That is second rib. Okay. And the space below the second rib is the second intercostal space. So from that you can count all the intercostal spaces on the both sides. Okay. Now uh, after. in percussion so you have to percuss both the sides in percussion also your next next comes the auscultation so in auscultation again what we have to do we have to auscultate each and every area and uh, with your stethoscope and uh, you have to note if there is any first of all you will be hearing for breath sounds what kind of breath sound it is is it, is it vesicular or is it bronchial secondly you will be hearing for any Uh, adventitious sounds repetitions ronkai or any plural rub so you will be looking for those additional sounds okay and at last you will be doing the vocal resonance in vocal resonance we with the stethoscope we keep uh, ask the child we keep the stethoscope at a place and we ask the child to speak so he will say 1 2 3 and you can we have to compare it from in, on the both sides so we should always examine the patient from the right side okay बेटा एक दो तीन बोलो 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 So you have to uh, examine each area. You have to also examine the axilla, and also you have to examine the back. Okay, in, uh, in this part that is auscultation. Clear? All right. Uh, so uh, one more thing that I need to tell you is that you you have to know the gross areas because while we are uh, telling, suppose you have to tell me that with which area is problematic. So how will you tell it? So you need to know certain areas also. Okay. Uh, this oh, above the clavicle is supra clavicular below the clavicle is intra clavicular then this area is mammary area then see down it is sir so this is see down very good very good very good so below the uh, mammary area is intra mammary area then here comes axillary area intra axillary area then as a pleat as a pleat go back to bed jo the beta as it is both very good and mono mono aaram se beta very good see down थोड़ा सा पीछे रखा तो थोड़ा सा थोड़ा सा ड्यूरिंग परकशन वन मोर थिंग दैट यू आर सपोज टू डू इज यू हैव टू परकस द क्लैविकल ऑल्सो सो क्लैविकल वी डोंट डू दैट दिस इन क्लैविकल So this, look how important it is to uh, observe the child from all the sides. He has lesions on the back of on his back, and so you have to examine the child from all the sides. It's very important. Now, by cutting uh, the clavicle is with or directly, you have to cut the side. Yeah.
okay